Hey guys, it's Alex here, and I'm back with Southampton for the uh, February review of our second season uh, in the Premier League now. Um, as you can tell from the league, we're sitting in 7th. So if I go to the Premier League and the stages, we are sitting in 7th at the moment, just behind Newcastle and Liverpool at the moment. Man City, Chelsea, Man U up at the top. Arsenal and... Well, it's actually really close. There's only six points between me and Man City. But, yeah, to first we're just going to start with our transfers for la this, well, this uh, year altogether. First off, we are most, not the most expensive, but Flavio Galli, a regen. Yep, I'm already buying regens. Bought him for four million from Roma. He looks very good. He's been in the youth team and been playing some starts. He's already got like one or two goals. Also, we brought in Nicholas Bentner from uh, Arsenal on loan, which is actually a really good thing to do because Ricky Lampert got uh, injured with like knee tendonitis, I think. So he was out for four months. He's only just coming back now. Clint Dempsey we got from uh, Tottenham for 5.5 million. This was... A bad signing, to be fair. I'm going to send him back out again, because he hasn't done well at all for us. Brought in Jay Spearing, 1.4 million. He's done, he's done well. He's sort of like a backup player. Also, he brought in John uh, Guidetti on loan. He's done well, actually, as well. Um, he's got five goals, two in the league, three in the cup, which is pretty good. Also, and this is definitely one of our best signings, Johnny Evans from Man U for six million. Uh, he's now seven point seven five million, but he has been a tank at the back with uh, Clark, Kieran Clark. Then in this January, all we did was buy Jovino because he was transfer listed. Uh, we bought him for four point seven million. He's done well actually so far. He's got an assist and a goal already, I think. Yeah, we've well, got two assists and a goal already in three appearances, which is really good. So, going out, we had released some players, and we put people out on loan. Callum Chambers, a good um, uh, young player. Jonathan Forte, he needs to leave the club. Kelvin Davis to Blackburn. Uh, our backup keeper, Gazaniga, uh, on a loan. Aaron Martin went to Chris Palace, 700. Dean Hammond went to Millwall. Luke Shaw, one of our best young prospects, 1.8 million. Left back gone to Cardiff. Um, just basically a lot of um, just uh, loans going through of younger players. Billy Sharp to Huddersfield. I think quite Steve's Ridge to Leicester. A lot of these players I put on, on transfer listed, but people came in for loans. So I just let them. But Cardiff, I actually want to show you this. They, because they won the Carling Cup, I think, or um, probably came second in the Carling Cup on the League Cup, uh, the squad fixtures, they were actually in the Euro Cup. And it was so unlucky for them. They drew on the last day. If they had got, a, because Bellamy got sent off, they were dominating Penrith and Icos. If Bellamy had got sent off, they would have won and come second. But Tottenham were actually the holders of the Euro Cup. But if we look into the group stage for the Euro Cup, uh, we had Arsenal going through, Tottenham going through, and also we had Liverpool going through. Cardiff were the only ones that didn't go through. And now if we look to the second knockout round. round actually, first... Um, who do we have? Liverpool, Ajax, Aston Villa are through. It's Metalist. Didn't even see them in the other in the group stage. Tottenham versus Hiravine. Arsenal versus Spokta at Moscow. Where are Aston Villa? Aston Villa, Aston Villa. Where are they? Oh, I think oh I know. I know what. Um let's go to Man City and then the champ. Oh, they weren't. They're not in the Champions League anymore. Chelsea, Champions League. Here we go. Group stage. All. Celtic got Europa. Inter. Man, you got through. 
Um, Barcelona obviously getting through. Chelsea getting through. Man City going out at sixth. Jeez. They did not do well at all. Can't find Aston Villa anywhere. Jesus. But where are they now? Uh, Man U versus Atletico Madrid. Chelsea versus Leverkusen. That's the only English teams there. Well, so actually, let's get on to the fixtures actually um, that we had. So, so we had some friendlies organised by the assistant manager taking over. We had a very, well, like a good but not very high scoring start to the season. We had Sheffield Wednesday first, Lambert getting the goal, 1 0. Swansea 1 0, Johnny Evans getting his first goal. Then we had Crystal Palace 3 0, Jack Cork and Guidetti getting two. West Ham, we have 1-0. Gaston Ramirez. Blackburn, 2-0. Stephen Davis and Ricky Lambert, which is actually quite strange, having two goals. At this point, we were around top in the league, I think, or somewhere. Like, Reading, we drew 1-1. We were still top with Arsenal. Bentner getting the goal. Sunderland, we beat 3-0. Um, Bentner, Galley getting his first goal, and Lolana getting. Then we sort of hit a bit of a... Rough patch with Tottenham losing 2-0 and Chelsea losing 2-0. Then probably one of the best games of my career so far with Football Manager 2013. Um, we played Man U at Old Trafford and we got the 1-0 win. If we go to the stats, actually no, analysis, overview... Nicholas Bentner in the f 48th minute. Um, format report. No. Oh, man, there we go. Match stats. Look at them. 23 shots to 5. 12 to 3. 65% possession to 35% possession. I think Evans and Clark are so good at the back together. Clark getting the man of the match. But we had one attack and that was it and then Bentner scored off it which was amazing and that's how we got the 1-0 win against Man U there, then we had Wigan we beat 1-0, Jack Cork getting the goal the Cavs Cup 4th round versus Blackpool, Jay Rodriguez getting the goal and Gaston Ramirez getting the goal um, Rodriguez and Ramirez <laughs> uh, Everton 2-1 Nicholas Bentner getting 2 Stoke we lost 2-0 they're actually really good at the moment, Newcastle we drew 1-1, Clark getting a goal, Fulham we drew 1-1, David Ruiz scoring an own goal, but Ramirez scoring a goal. Then we lost 2-0 to Aston Villa, actually really good. Then we had Man City in the uh, Capital One Cup quarter-final. We went down 2-0 to them from Balotelli, and then he got his second year and got sent off, and then we just completely dominated throughout the entire match. Ramirez getting a goal and Snyderlin getting the goal. I think it went to eight penalties in the end because it was two two after extra time, and we won six five on penalties. It was really good. I thought we were going to lose on penalties def for definite. Uh, then we had Arsenal lost two nil, which was quite disappointing. QPR we lost two one, Bentley getting one, but and then Man City we lost two nil, then getting revenge. Uh, then we had 5-0 versus Bolton, our biggest win so far. Stephen Davis getting 2, Ramirez getting 2, and Guidetti getting 1. Liverpool we beat 1-0, Klein getting a goal. We got dominated in this match too, and it was a cross from Klein that he hit Rayner and went in off the post. That was our only attack of the game in the, like the 82nd minute, and then I just put it on defensive. Then we lost 1-0 to Swansea, which was really annoying. Uh, Reading in the FA Cup third round, beating John Guidetti, getting one. Arsenal one nil in the first leg. This is sort of a smash and grab game as well. Jack Cork getting one. Sheffield Wednesday four nil. Johnny Evans getting one. Dempsey getting his first goal finally. Bentner getting two. Uh, West Ham two nil. Ramirez missed a penalty, got one, and Guidetti got one. Then Arsenal again. Johnny Evans, did he score on both? No, he didn't. It was Jack Cork, but got dominated in this game too. But that means we go to we're into the Capital One Cup final versus Man U. So this could ensure us Europe next year if Man U do well, get into Europe, like the Champions League. We, I think we would get Europa from this. 
but then we had Man City again in the FA Cup, which we lost 2-1, went down 2 nil, and then I think Schneiderlin got a penalty in the 89th minute, but we couldn't bring it back from there. Then we had Reading 3 nil, Jovino getting one, Dempsey getting one, Ramirez getting one, and then Blackburn we just had now, and we won one nil with Lalana getting the goal there. For the Premier League, there's been a lot of transfers going on. So, if we look at this, Neymar has gone to Man U. Jesus, we went, he went to Man U for 42.5 million. Cisse has gone to Chelsea for 32 million. Hummels has gone to Man City from Dortmund. Hamsik to Man U for 27 million. Yarmolenko for 25 million. Arta Turan to Man City for 21 million. Almera for 20 million. Look at these, all these like high amounts. Are we anywhere near? Look, we're Johnny Evans at 6 million at the moment. 6 million, and that's our biggest transfer. And you can see all these other big ones going through. Kabul going to Man City. Badstuber going to Man City. Man City and Man U have just overpowered completely. David Santon. Kaga were left actually though for Porto for 14.7 million. Uh, Lon Yosu Alonso going through, but Tiote going to PSG, Fabio going to Tottenham, David Luiz going to Barcelona, and that was one of the smaller deals. Kevin De Bruyne going to Real Madrid. I was going to get him alone, but then he went to Real Madrid for 10 million. Jelovic going to PSG. Look, there's so much activity going on. It's ridiculous. So then I think to let's show you actually the stats of the Premier League. Player stats, um, goals. Darren Bent's leading again. Jordan Rhodes. Jordan Rhodes is doing really well with 16. Giroud, Bar Aguero assists for Mika. Johnny Evans is up there as you can see in the average rating. He's doing really well. Um, <laughs> Games won, Man City have taken over that completely. Um, to show our youth squad, actually, we have Flavio Galli, who's actually really good. Look at those stats. Then we have uh, Luke Shaw, obviously. Very good left back. Then we have Harry Hooper, who is a centre back and a right back. Look at that determination 19. Can play left back, defensive mid, centre back, and right back. And if we go to information, he has been dubbed the new Phil Jagielka. So I'm hoping to keep training him and put I put him in the first team once or twice when both our left back and right Klein and Fox thing we had Harry Hooper and Johnny Cooper playing. Martin Smith obviously. Look at those stats. He hasn't been dubbed anything, but he he seriously looks amazing. Um. But the game doesn't rate him. Johnny Cooper, he's been injured for a bit though. He is actually touted the next Wes Brown. He can play sweeper as well, actually. He's um one of the best players. He can play he's a two star already. But yeah, I'm just We have all these games now left. We're out of the FA Cup. Have the Cuppers Cup on final versus Manu. And yeah, and then we have Manu again. Game, two games after, uh, Liverpool, Man City at the end of the season. Hopefully we can push on into the like five, six, seven, eight spots here. I don't really want to drop anywhere lower than eight. Stoke have been doing really well this year. Stoke and Newcastle have been doing well. Liverpool doing do well. Fulham have been doing crap since they they got seventh last year. They sacked the manager Martin Yole. And they're bottom of the league. West Ham. Bolton, Sheffield Wednesday, Reading, Aston Villa are down there, seeing as how well they did last year as well. QPR also a bit down, further down. Um, I think that's really it for all this. Johnny Evans and Javinho, I think they're really good signings, them two. Well, th hopefully they're going to be. Um, Ricky Lambert is just coming back. Where is he? He should be somewhere around here. There he is. Yeah. He's still very good, but he's been out forever. He's only played a few games now. Like knee tendonitis. But uh, I think that's it. We have a, Our next game is against Tottenham in a big battle, because they'll come to one point if they win this.